Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 3.4, round decimals. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use place value to round decimals to a given place? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 3.4, found on page 59, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number three. Once again, the directions say to write the place value of the underlined digit, and then I also have to round each number to the place of the underlined digit. Now, for question number three, the decimal number given is two and three hundred forty-eight thousandths. Now, the first part of my directions, once again, say to write the place value of the underlined digit. Well, based on my knowledge of place value, what I know is that three sitting right behind the decimal is in the tenths place. So my first job is to write down that that three is in the tenths. So that's going to be step number one because once again, I have to write the place value of the underlying digit. Now, the second part of the direction is say to round to the place of the underlying digit. So I know that I have to round my decimal number to the tenths place. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write my decimal number down. Now, my first step is to locate the digit in the place you want to round. And what I know is the digit that's in the tenths place is my three. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a circle around my three. Now, step two says, underline the digit to the right of the circle digit. Well, I know that my four is the number that's to the right of my circle digit. Now, I have to ask myself, in looking at that four, is that four less than five? And if that four is less than five, that means that my circle digit would stay the same. Or is my number, that four, greater than five? And if it is, then I have to increase my circle digit by one. Well, what I know is, I know that that four is less than five. And because that four is less than five, my circle digit is now going to stay the same. So what I know is, I know that I'm still gonna have my whole number two, then my decimal, my three will stay the same, but I also know that my last step in this process says that I now have to drop the digits to the right of the circle digit. So I know that my four and my eight are going to disappear, and in rounding this number correctly, what I end up with as my answer is two and three tenths. And I've now rounded my decimal number to the nearest tenths place. Now, let's take a look at question number four. Once again, my job is to write the place value of the underlying digit, and then I also have to round each number to the place of the underlying digit. Now, for question number four, the decimal number given is 506 thousandths. Now, what I'm gonna do first is this. I'm gonna write down the place value of the underlying digit. Well, let's review that place value again. Behind my decimal, I know that I have the tenths place, so the five is in the tenths place. Then I have the hundredths place, and then I have the thousandths place. So I know that my zero is my underlying digit, which means that zero is in the hundredths place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and write down that my zero is in the hundredths place. And what that means is, is that I'm gonna be rounding this decimal number to the hundredths place. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna rewrite my decimal number, just like it's given. Now, I know that I need to locate the digit in the place that I want to round. And once again, that place is the hundredths place. So I know that my zero is in the hundredths place. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a circle around my zero. So I'm gonna circle my zero. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to underline the digit to the right of my circle digit, and that's going to be my 6. Now, what I know about my 6 is this. I know that a 6 is greater than 5, so that tells me I'm going to have to increase my circle digit by 1. So when I add 0 plus 1, that's going to give me a 1. So at this point, what I know I have is I have, let's write this down, I have the zero and the decimal and the five. And once again, 
0 plus 1 is going to give me 1, so I'm going to write down my 1. But now remember, the last step in rounding decimal numbers says that you're going to drop the digits to the right of the circle digit. And in this case, that 6 is the number that will be dropped. So in rounding this decimal number correctly, what I end up with is, I end up with 51 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at question number 8. The directions say to name the place value to which each number was rounded. Now, for question number 8, the first decimal number given is 4 and 805 thousandths. And what they've done is they've rounded that to 4 and 8 tenths. Now, if I'm reading this decimal number correctly as 4 and 8 tenths, what I think to myself is, if that 8 is in the tenths place, that means they've rounded to the nearest tenth. But I want to double check myself and make sure. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to rewrite my decimal number. So I'm going to write down my 4 and 805 thousandths. And I'm going to work to round it to the nearest tenths to make sure I'm on the right track. Well, what I know is, I know that my 8 is in the tenths place. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle around my 8. And what I also know is that my 0 is to the right of my 8. Well, I know that a 0 is less than 5, so that means my 8 is going to stay the same. So if I were to round that number correctly, it would become 4 and 8 tenths. Because once again, the numbers to the right of the circle digit, which in this case are the 0 and the 5, they drop away. So what I know is this. I know that they have rounded our number to the nearest tenths place. So I'm going to write down the tenths, and we now have our answer. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. The directions say once again to name the place value to which each number was rounded. Now, for number 10, the first decimal number given was 1 and 974 thousandths and they've rounded that to 2 and 0 tenths. Now, I know once again if I've read this number correctly as 2 and 0 tenths, I know that they've rounded, or I think that they've rounded to the nearest tenths place. Well, I'm going to go ahead and check my rounding out to make sure I'm on the right track. So my first step is going to be this. I'm going to go ahead and write down 1 and 974 thousandths. And once again, what I'm thinking is, is that they've rounded to the nearest tenths place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to circle, first of all, my number that is in the tenths place. And in this case, that would be my 9. Well, the number that's to the right of my 9 is a 7. Well, what I know is this. I know that 7 is greater than 5. And if 7 is greater than 5, that means I'm going to increase my 9 by 1. Well, I know that when I increase my 9 by 1, I know that 9 plus 1 is going to give me 10. So that 9 is going to turn into my 10, so I'm going to write the 0 down here, but I'm going to regroup the 1. And I know that 1 plus 1 is going to give me 2, so I end up with 2 and 0 tenths. Because when I round correctly, the numbers behind that circle digit drop off, so I end up with 2 and 0 tenths. So what I know is, I know that they have rounded that to the nearest tenths place. So I'm going to write down tenths, and we now have the answer to our question. Now, let's take a look at this next set of questions. The directions say to round 7 and 954 thousandths to the place that's named. So let's start out with question number 13. They want us, first of all, to round that decimal to the tenths place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to rewrite my decimal, which once again was 7 and 954 thousandths, and I need to round that to the nearest tenths place. So what I know is this. I know that my 9 is in the tenths place. So I'm going to put a circle around my 9. So we're going to circle the 9. And then I'm going to underline the digit to the right of my 9, which is my 5. Well, what I know is this. If my underlined digit is 5 or greater, and it is, it's a 5, then I'm going to increase my circle digit by 1. So what happens is this. 
9 plus 1 becomes 10. So in place of that 9, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a 0 to represent my 10. And then I'm going to regroup the 1. And I know that 1 plus 7 is now going to give me 8. So what I have now is 8 and 0 tenths. So when I round the decimal given 7 and 954 thousandths to the nearest tenths, my answer turns out to be 8 and 0 tenths. Now, let's take a look at question number 14. For question 14, my job is to once again take this decimal, but this time I'm going to round it to the nearest hundredths place. So the first thing I'm going to do once again is I'm going to go ahead and write my decimal number down again. So I have 7 and 954 thousandths, but this time I'm going to round it to the hundredths place. Well, what I know is I know that my 5 is in the hundredths place. So I'm going to put a circle around my 5, and I know that my 4 is to the right of my 5. Now I'm going to look at that 4, and what I notice is that 4 is less than 5. And if that 4 is less than 5, then my circled number stays the same. So what I'm going to write down now is, I'm going to write down my 7. Let's write this down. I have my 7, my decimal, my 9, and my 5. And also what I know is, is that any digits behind that circled number, they drop away. So that 4 is now gone. So when I round 7 and 954 thousandths to the nearest hundredths place, that becomes 7 and 95 hundredths. Now, the last step is to take our decimal, and we're going to round it to the ones. So once again, as my first step, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write my decimal number down once again. So I have 7 and 954 thousandths, and this time I'm going to focus on rounding to the ones place. Well, what I know is, I know that my 7 is in the ones place, so I'm going to circle my 7, and then I'm going to underline the number to the right of my 7, which is a 9. Now, when I look at that 9, what I know is, that 9 is greater than 5. And since that 9 is greater than 5, I'm going to increase my 7, which is my circled digit, by 1. And I know that 7 plus 1 is going to give me 8. So what I'm going to do is, I'm now going to come down here and I'm going to write down 8. Now here's the thing. I know that I have to drop the digits to the right of the circled digit. So my 9, my 5, and my 4 are all going to be dropped. So when I correctly round 7 and 954 thousandths to the ones place, it turns out to be the whole number 8. Now, let's take a look at question number 19. It's one of our real world problem solving questions, and number 19 says the population density of Montana is 6 and 699 thousandths people per square mile. What is the population density per square mile of Montana? rounded to the nearest whole number. So what I know is this. I know that the population density is 6 and 699 thousandths. And I know that they want me to round that number to the nearest whole number. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to rewrite the decimal number given. So I have 6 and 699 thousandths. And what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to circle that first 6 because that 6 is in the ones place. It represents the whole number. Now I'm going to underline the digit to the right of my 6, which is the second 6. Now what I know is this. I know that 6 is greater than 5. And if 6 is greater than 5, I have to increase my circle digit by 1. So when I add 6 plus 1, that's going to take me to 7. So I'm going to write down my 7, and then what I know is this. I know that the digits behind that circled digit, they drop off, they go away. So when I round the population density per square mile of Montana to the nearest whole number, it turns out to be 
seven people per square mile. Now, let's check out question number 20. It's another one of our real world problem solving questions and number 20 says, Alex's batting average is 346 thousandths. What is his batting average rounded to the nearest hundredth? So what I know is this. In my problem, they give me Alex's batting average, which is 346 thousandths, and they want to know what his batting average is rounded to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that decimal number down. So I have, once again, 346 thousandths, and I know that I have to round that to the nearest hundredth. Well, let's review that decimal place value again. Behind the decimal I have my tenths, then my hundredths, then my thousandths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a circle around my four because that four is in the hundredths place. And then I'm going to underline my six because that six is to the right of the four. Now, in looking at my six, what I know is this. Six is greater than five. And if six is greater than five, I have to increase my four by one. I know that 4 plus 1 is going to give me 5, so what happens is I'm going to bring down my 0, my decimal, and my 3, and once again, I'm going to add 1 to my 4, and 1 plus 4 is going to be 5. Now I also know in rounding that any numbers behind or to the right of that circle digit, they drop off or they go away. So in rounding Alex's batting average to the nearest hundredth place, what I end up with is, I end up with 35 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. I would like you guys to complete question number one and question number two, along with numbers three through six, found in your Go Math workbook on page 60. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice? number two, an apprentice, number three, a practitioner, or number four, an expert. Don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete number one and number two, as well as numbers three through six, found in your Go Math workbook on page 60. I hope you have a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.